actually, uh, Dara, if I could borrow yours, is this the correct rule? So we have a sequence of numbers, negative 2 thirds, 3 fourths, negative 4 fifths, 5 sixths, and negative 6 sevenths. All right? And they're asking us to determine the rule. So the first thing that obviously I think I noticed in this is I see an alternating signs, right? Yes? So if you guys remember, the first thing that we want to be able to do when we understand alternating signs is we know, remember, when we're writing our rules, we write them in subscript notation. So we're going to have a sub n, where n represents the number in the sequence. So one thing we can do is label which numbers we have in the sequence. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, so we have five terms in the sequence starting at number one. Now, obviously, we want to write a rule in subscript notation. Once I see an alternating signs, I'm automatically going to write negative one raised to the n power because I know I have to have that involved. Now, we, we looked at some problems last class period where this could be n plus one, n minus one. Do you guys remember that? Right? It could change, but we know that's the least, the basis of it, right? That's the most basic. Then we see we have a numerator and a denominator. So when I see a numerator and denominator, I like to kind of do them separately. So I'll just put a nice little fraction bar, and I'm going to want to find the rule for the top and the bottom. Now, obviously, if n equals 1, that's going to be negative. Is this make them my first, is my first term negative? Yeah. Yes. And then if that's 2, that'd be positive, then negative, positive, then negative. So it doesn't, so it doesn't look like I need to change anything here. All right, let's go and investigate and see if we can find the, the rule of the sign. So if I look at 1, now remember when we're look, trying to find the rule, the first thing I would say is see if you can do addition or subtraction first, then do a multiplication division, then look at a combination of the two. So to go from 1 to 2, I have to do what, Haley? Add 1. Add 1, right? Other Haley. <coughs> what do I have to do um, to go from 2 to 3? And then 3 to 4? Add 1. Forget about the negative signs, right? Once we complete the alternating signs, we can kind of forget about it. Just deal with the absolute value of 4 to 5, add 1. 5 to 6, add 1. So would it make sense then I can say my numerator is n plus 1? Yeah. That's the rule. That makes sense? Then let's go and look at the next one down below. To go from 1 to 3, looks like we have to add 2. From 2 to 4, add 2. From 3 to 5, add 2. So my rule for my denominator is n plus 2. And then obviously we're going to be multiplying those by our alternating signs, Haley, because what that's going to do is tell us if it's going to be a positive or a negative. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Can we put the, N, the negative uh, 1 to the n up on top? The numerator? That's numerator. Right. Yeah, I mean, it is in the numerator. You can write it over 1 if you want to. This, our, this is just representing it as a whole number, so it would be multiplied by you know the numerator in front. Cool? No questions? Everybody feels good on that?